when I was trying to pick between the ones, I just wrote them all down on a piece of paper and then put them all in a pile and just prayed over them. And then the two classes came to my mind and I asked which one and I just kept praying over those two and I feel like he's saying take them both. Okay, 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 very good. Well, we'll talk a, li a little later on, not tonight, but later on, like maybe early next week, we'll talk about that and see where you're going. Okay. I think you can do it. Okay? Uh, with Jesus, I, I, I just don't want to rob you. you and, I don't want to rob you and your family of, of your time and because um, your workload is going to double. Right, right. Um, I, I feel like that would not be an issue. At this particular oh. point in time. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we pray about it, and we talk about it, and uh, we see. Um, Sounds great. Venture into a little bit more next week. Okay, okay. Praise God. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing rather well, Pastor Carter. How are you doing? Praise God. I'm doing rather well too, man. Rather well. Um, as you can see, I those of you who can see, I've got a, a hoodie on and a. Red plaid shirt. It's cold down here in Georgia, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad up here today. It was, I think it was like 37 today. Yeah, man. Georgia's trying to act like Pennsylvania, but praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good talk. Yeah, with now you. Got, yeah, now, now, you got, now you guys are going to get a taste of what we went through. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, hey, I, I'll let you and I schedule a talk at some time. So we can see which, uh, how we can how we can help you in in, in your next uh, the next step of the way. So maybe we have set up a schedule. Um, I'll try to text okay. you or email you tomorrow. We set up a time where we can talk one on one. Okay. I appreciate that, Doctor. Thank you. Hey, because I appreciate you, man, and give my love to Miss Tara and Miss Jenna. Okay. You got it, and give my love to Miss Jackie as well and her mom. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you can. Uh, uh, let's pray. Keep keep in prayer. Roger Pond. He's he's stretching out on a new venture, and uh, he's he's finished his coursework. So he he needs his prayer. Our prayers in the next venture. So we'll talk about that too. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Praise God. Zisla. God bless you, Zisla. Mid Hi, Texas. God bless. How are yes. you? God bless you, Pastor Carter. And yet yeah, it's raining and cold. <laughs> but I finally arrived here, arrived on the driveway. So yeah, I made it. So I'm I'm going to be rushing in and turning on the computer in just a minute. <laughs> praise God, praise God. All right, glad you made it home safely and good to hear your voice and join us in a minute. Okay. Yes, All thank right. you. All right. God bless you, Jackie Fisher. Jackie Fisher, yeah. how are you doing? I'm doing well. Highly favored of the Lord. And how about you, Pastor Carter? How are you? I am doing very well, Jackie. Doing very well. And um, Lord has continued to bless us, bless the school, bless our family, household. By the way, everybody, Jackie, my wife Jackie says she cannot, she will not be in attendance tonight. Um, she's going out with her oldest daughter to celebrate her birthday and uh, her 48th birthday. So. We understand that. She's doing the family thing. I can't go with her. And so she sends her love and greetings to everyone. But bless Jackie Fisher and Russell and the household, okay? Thank you very much. Praise God. Roy Rosser. Hey, Roy, how are you doing? Hey, Dr. Carter. How's it going? Fine, fine. Going very well, Roy. Going very well. How's everything in Florida? Well, um, I mean, I thought I wouldn't mention how things are in Florida after last time I was talking about the temperature. Yes. And then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I decided I'll just say everything's okay. Okay. Now I remember, I Roy, I remember our last talk. You said you said you all were having the one cold week in the winter, and then it would return to eighty degrees. <laughs> Yep. I assume it has not returned to 80 degrees, huh? Uh, I think um, high today was probably around high 70s or somewhere around there. Okay, okay, okay. 
ladies and gentlemen, Roy likes to rub it in. He likes to rub it in. <laughs> no, I was trying to avoid that this time. <laughs> Praise God. By the way, uh, class, um, we want to salute Roy, and kudos to him. And Roy, you've done a great job. And Roy will be our first graduate from the Paul Bakery School of Prophecy. As soon as he completes this course, Roy becomes our first graduate, and he will graduate this month with an associate's degree in prophetic ministry. And uh, we thank God for Roy. He's going to be uh, um, the pace setter. And so congratulations to Roy, and uh, we love you. And then we'll just uh, see what the next step will be, Roy, okay? But my hat's off to you, and I just want to commend you on the great work you have done and uh, let you know that we appreciate you. We appreciate you hanging in there and setting the pace. Uh, Christina, Roy took two courses this semester, and he's done very well in both of them. So it's doable, and you can do it, Christina. And um, so we just... We, we don't try to overload anybody, but we want you to get the best you can. If you, if you want to take more than one, that's okay. So, Roy, congratulations. You'll be getting your degree certificate later on this month, and um, you'll be hearing from Pastor Paul Bakley also. So God bless will it, you. Will that be a personal delivery to my house? Um, it might be personal delivery. You know, when UPS brings something to your house, it's personal, right? <laughs> you know what was coming after this, don't you? Uh-huh. Yes. Now uh -huh. you're going on for the, the bachelor's degree. No, no, no. I mean, if you, if you personal deliver to my house, was so that you could bring me that bucket of chicken wings you keep promising Oh, man. Me. Oh, man. I got... You know never, what, Roy? I'm still that, looking in my mail every day. That brand of chicken wings, <laughs> I bought them frozen at a certain store. I have not found that brand lately. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'll probably go again on Saturday, but I'm going to find you some, man, because, mm, I mean, when you eat those wings, I mean, it'll just... Mm, Knock your socks off. We, now, we we bought some, but they were terrible. That's that's the only reason why like, we've tried two different brands, and they were just awful. Yeah, there so, are a lot of places. I was trying to figure out what kind you had. They don't know how to cook them, but uh, we'll we'll work out something, Roy. Okay, and <laughs> it'll, right, be a, it'll be a personal delivery. Okay, <laughs> if Jackie and I have to drive to Florida. <laughs> no, no, no I'm just win. kidding, lady. You know, I'm just joking around. Hey, look. If we can do it, if we can pull this off, we will. Okay, now your classmates are saying, okay, let's get on with the class, Pastor Carter. So we're going to do this. Praise I God. was saying I want to go to Florida, too, right now. It's 30-something degrees here in Oklahoma. I want some chicken wings and Florida weather. <laughs> uh, Christina says she wants some chicken wings and some Florida weather. See, Roy, Roy, you're picking on us. See, Roy, you're messing us up, man. You go, you're messing us up. I mean, it's it's hard, hard to teach when you're trembling and shivering, but we're going to try to get through this. We're, by the way, we're warm. I'm just, I just have layers on. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Uh, lesson 11 in our course, War in the Spirit. Lesson 11. And um, you have six questions to answer in your homework. And then next week is uh, a piece of cake as far as, assignments are concerned we're just asking you to do a two to three page report and that will summarize the course so let's open up with prayer father god we come before you in the mighty name of jesus we thank you and bless you and honor you and ask that you guide us tonight as we study let your anointing be upon us bless each student and their family meet every need and we thank you and praise you in jesus mighty name Amen. Amen. Hey, Roy, now, what was the name of the gentleman whom I talked with? I told him I'm going to call him tomorrow. I wrote his number down, but I didn't get his name. Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Do you remember his last name, uh, Christy? Christina? Um, nope, not right off the top of my head. Give me a minute, and it'll probably come back to me, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, okay. Said, he also okay. said Daniel. that his first name was Derek. Okay. And re Daniel. I remember he said Clifton. Yep. Jackie just typed in Clifton. Okay. 
That's good enough. That's good enough. Okay, fine. All right. Okay, in the next uh, 45 minutes, I want to talk about prayer watches and walks. Prayer watches and walks. Prayer walks from chapter 15 of uh, Cindy Jacobs' book, uh, Possessing the Gates of the Enemy. This is a great book. And then we're going to talk about Possessing the Gates of the Enemy, chapter 16. I'd like to spend most of my concentration on uh, chapter 15, Prayer Watches and Prayer Walks. In this book, as we have studied, we've learned a lot about intercessory prayer. We've learned a lot about war in the spirit. As we look at this chapter, Prayer Watches and Prayer Walks, we're going to look at even how um, prayer walks or prayer watches can shut down a nation can shut down a community, can change a community, can change a household, can change a church. When uh, people come together in unison and pray unto, to the Lord and trust the Lord, God will do amazing things. So let's take a look at this. A number of prayer watches, intense, concentrated prayer for a specified time or purpose. I'm on page 199. A number of them have surfaced in the history of prayer and revival. And um, I remember as a history student, I'm a history major uh, from college, and I remember Abraham Lincoln uh, called for a day of fasting and prayer during the Civil War. And his objective was not uh, just to defeat the South. His, his goal was not to defeat the South. His overall goal was to preserve the Union, preserve the United States. And in order to, to preserve the United States, he had to win a war. It, it, it grieved Lincoln's spirit to have to see brothers fighting against brothers. But he called for a special time of fasting and prayer at a time when almost it was almost a year after the war began, the Union could not win a battle. And so Lincoln called for this time of prayer and fasting, and people prayed and fasted, and the tide of the war turned. Um, and the overall result was the, the Union was preserved. A lot of pain came through this, and a lot of healings had to take place. And there are still healings taking place, but this great... A uh, man who trusted the Lord, he put his trust in God, and he, he called the nation to pray, pray for the nation to preserve the nation. So we're talking about prayer watches, where or, organized prayer watches, groups of people will come together in unison to, to agree to ask God uh, for certain things. Uh, Cindy Jacobs gives the example of Reese Howells. He led many prayer watches during World War II. The Moravians held one that lasted 100 years um, in their efforts in Germany. And so we're going to look at prayer watches and walks. A prayer watch may take a variety of lengths and forms. Some churches have prayer lock-ins in which a group stays in the church building in prayer all night long. In other churches, people come on a 24-hour rotational basis. I participated in uh, one of the churches that I pastored several years ago. We had all-night prayer vigils, all-night prayer vigils. We would ask the people <coughs> to bring their blankets or their sleeping bags, and, and we had shut-ins uh, to pray all night long um, for whatever uh, the Lord put on our hearts. It takes a lot of dedication for people to pray all night long. And and nobody can really pray all night long. You, you pray in shifts. You pray for a while, then you go to sleep. Then you wake up and you pray again. And uh, that's how we roll. Um, incidentally, Cindy Jacobs recommends uh, for serious um, warfare people, prayer warriors, that... If you're going to organize a prayer walk or organize a prayer team, then um, it's good to, to divide people into prayer shifts. 
Um, nobody can pray 24 hours straight. Um, and and what we're seeing with prayer warriors, intercessors, and I talk with and share this with Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi and Katz and the prayer team last week when Jackie and I were in uh, Indiana, and they really appreciate what, what I had to share. And I share with them the importance of developing prayer teams and dividing the prayer watches uh, into 24-hour segments and then asking people to volunteer for two-hour blocks of time or one-hour blocks of time. Divide the clock into 24 hours and just have people volunteer. Uh, one person taking two hours, 12 to 2, then 2 to 4 a.m., then 4 to 6 a.m., 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., and then going around the clock that way and then developing teams with team leaders having uh, people uh, on their team praying during those two hours so that, so that we don't wear prayer warriors out. So many intercessors are being worn out. And as we will see later in this chapter and in the next chapter, how many intercessors become sick because they spend too much time uh, focusing on prayer without taking care of their own body and their own needs. Cindy Jacobs says herself, she spent, she prayed a whole 24 hour period and she became sick. Satan knows, Satan knows when to attack. And so uh, we must be wise in, in even developing prayer teams and, and not depending on one person to do all the intercession. What I'm seeing in many churches is uh, many people depend on one person or, or one small group to do all the praying for them. And I shared with Katz, uh, Katz Gardner, about the um, prayer requests that come in from all over the nation. Uh, people are expecting Katz to do a lot of praying, and they're, they're asking Pastor Paul to do a lot of praying for them. But Pastor Paul can't do all the praying. Katz can't do all the praying. But as we teach people how to pray for themselves, as we set up prayer teams, as we set up shifts where people can pray and then get some rest, um, we're going to see more effective prayer. Prayer warriors, intercessors, need rest time. Roy, prayer warriors need time for healing. And when Satan sees you praying, 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 he knows when to attack. And so a lot of prayer warriors become afflicted. Some get sick. Some of their, they, uh, their family members get sick because um, they're focusing on praying for the needs of others. And they, they often neglect their families and neglect their own needs. And so um, if you're tired, if you're tired, then the best as Cindy Jacob says, the best thing for you to do if you're tired, and she learned this the hard way uh, from what we're reading. She learned this the hard way. When you're tired and worn out, the best intercessory prayer you can do is to go to sleep and get some rest. Get some rest. And um, that is why prayer teams ought to have others serious, seriously praying and seriously being a part of the team. One person cannot do it all. So I'm appreciative of this book. I've learned so much and I will be reading this book again and again and teaching more from it so that we can develop prayer teams and, and help churches, help the body of Christ, help intercessors uh, and help intercessors to help one another and we can pull down strongholds but we've got to do it wisely trusting in the Lord. You're no good it, uh, as, as a prayer warrior if you're sick or if you're uh, afflicted. And so we, we want to use wisdom in this. The value of corporate intercession in prayer watches is that God is able to use all different gift mixes and heart cries to express the needs of his heart. Top of page 200. It is always interesting to me to listen to people pray in a prayer watch. They pray from their own personal interests and callings. I have a friend, Cindy Jacobs says, who is greatly involved in government. She always sees a need in terms of raising up good governmental leaders and prays toward that end. Pastors pray from the focus 
of the ongoing life of the church. Evangelists pray with an eye on the lost. Corporate intercession offers a fulfillment of the mandate in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to pray without ceasing. No one person can pray 24 hours a day. We're talking about spiritual warfare, ladies and gentlemen. No one person can pray 24 hours a day, but a team can. And we're learning so much about teamwork and the importance of teamwork. Imagine the power and authority of a team of intercessors praying as the Lord prompts them around the clock. What a powerful prayer of agreement of unceasing intercession. And so I share with uh, Paul and Heidi and the intercession team last week the importance of praying around the clock and developing teams. And, and um, they, they received that. We have, By the way, we had a great time in Indiana. Uh, it was good to be with Pastor Paul and good, good to see what's going on in the ministry and good to meet with other prayer leaders, intercessory prayer leaders who are in support of the Paul Begley Prophet. Prophecy Ministry. Uh, near the bottom of page 201, Cindy Jacobs writes, One time I was praying and seeking the Lord for a deeper revelation on the necessity of 24-hour prayer. And I heard the Spirit speak this loudly in my heart. The devil uses the cover of the night to do his worst deeds. I created the night and called it good, and I want my night back. God says the devil is using nighttime for his, his, his terrible deeds. Uh, God said, I created the night, and I want my night back. And so we can take back the night. That sounds like a movie. We can take back the night uh, by binding the enemy and interceding and calling upon the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is so important. Intercessory prayer is very important. We're talking about war in the spirit. And the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. We are pulling down Satan's strongholds through prayer. And um, by the way, if you can, I want to invite you to join me on Sunday morning as we wrap up a three-week series on uh, spiritual warfare, a three-week series on identifying Satan's weapons, and how to defeat the devil, how to defeat his weapons. We're going to look at uh, some major things that Satan is doing in, in his attempt to defeat people. Many people have been going under, but now we're identifying these weapons, and we're learning how to put the devil under our feet and, and to cause him to flee. You know, you and I, we have the power to cause the devil to run. The Bible says resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. And so we're learning how to resist the devil through our prayer, through our praise, through the worship of God, through the word of God, and, and, and God has given us mighty, mighty weapons. Um, Satan's scared of you guys. He doesn't want you learning this. He's scared of you. And so keep them under your feet and, and keep on trusting in the Lord. Most of all, remember that uh, the Bible tells us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. Don't ever think that you have arrived. Don't ever think that you can handle things by yourself. No, we need one another, and we need the Holy Spirit. We need the partnership with the Holy Spirit. And so we praise God. We thank God that he's, he, he has equipped the church to win the victory. Uh, on page 202, she talks about time segments and team members. And this is very interesting um, to, to assign time segments to the intercessory prayer warriors. Let them pray in shifts. Praying in shifts uh, causes a great concentration of prayer. Uh, it's just like uh, pointing your big guns at a mountainside and just shooting, firing your big guns at the mountain. Uh, you're going to tear the mountain down. Okay, in time, in shifts, when you have a team of people praying in agreement, uh, 
you're definitely going to pull Satan strongholds down. And, um, and then after that ship fires its salvo or volley of, of, of uh, um, weapons, then that team can rest while the next team takes over. And so this, this way you save your team, you, you uh, help them to replenish their supply of energy and power, and then the next team can do what they're called to do. For one of our prayer watches, she says, we had only 24 intercessors, and although it was great for group dynamics, many of the team took three watches a day and went home physically exhausted. Intercessory prayer will wear you out. I know uh, personally, and, and, and you probably know personally, intercessory prayer will wear you out. Um, remember, these intercessors stay up day and night praying intensely. Some of them are not able to sleep well when they come off their shifts. It's hard to come down after praying for a while. It's hard to come down after preaching for a while. I, I, I've had experiences where uh, preach, preach so hard that it takes a whole day, almost a whole day, to recover. I remember when I started preaching uh, as a young man in seminary, and I'd attend a preacher's conference on Mondays with a lot of pastors. And I said to one, uh, a group of uh, pastors, I said, uh, I, I'm worn out on Mondays. I, I can barely get here to this conference. I said, after I preach on Sunday, and it, in those days, I was preaching sometimes two or three times a Sunday. And, and I said, I'm so worn out. And they laughed at me. I mean, they, they scorned me. It was embarrassing. They said, what kind of preaching are you doing? Uh, 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 we don't do that. Well, because I was preaching from the bottom, the depths of my soul, and uh, some of that were just reading manuscripts. And no, when you preach, preaching takes everything out of you, and the Lord drains you as he uses every muscle, every fiber of your being to present the word of God so that people's lives can be changed. That is why we need to pray for pastors, uh, many pastors are under attack after preaching. We're talking about spiritual war, ladies and gentlemen. War in the spirit. If you're teaching a class, uh, you need to have intercessors praying for you uh, before you teach, while you teach, and after you teach. In other words, what we're learning in this course is the importance of having personal intercessors, people who are going to pray. Because after you finish ministering, whether it's going to the nursing home or going to the prison, for giving out food to the hungry, Satan is waiting to attack. And so we all need uh, personal intercessors. We need people to pray for us. If you're going on a trip or a conference or a mission, you need someone uh, to pray for you. At least, Cindy says, two weeks after you return from your mission, you need someone praying for you. Because it's during that two-week period of time uh, that people get sick, they become exhausted. Uh, Satan steps in and, and, and uh, wreaks, uh, wreaks havoc in the, in, the, in the family, in the marriage, in the household. And so uh, the many trips I've taken to Africa, I've, known, I've noticed that it takes me almost a month, 30 days to recover, to get my strength back, to get my, my vision back. Uh, by vision, I mean my focus back and, and to really feel strong again in my body. Um, I, I've said this to you before. And the last trip, Jackie, when Jackie went with me, it was, was her first trip with me to Africa. Um, she recovered in about two weeks, but it took me a month. I mean, I laid around the house. I had very little energy, and uh, it was. And I said, "Wow, it's taking me a long time." But then I noticed every time I go to Africa, it's a dream, because uh, um, we're coming up there. We're coming up against witchcraft and demonic spirits and marine spirits and evil spirits and, and uh, um, curses are put on, 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 on people who go on these foreign missions. And so it took time for me to be restored. But praise God for restoration and praise God for intercessors. I know more now about the importance of having intercessors than I did before. 
I'm one. I've gone overseas many times, and I've really not lined up intercessors to pray for me. But now um, I know better. I know better. And I refuse to go on a mission without having intercessors praying for me before I go and while I'm there and when I return. So I know, I know much more. It took me all these years to learn this, but I'm sharing this based on what Cindy Jacobs is teaching us so that you will not have to fall into the pitfalls that I've fallen in. Many people have been afflicted with sickness, malaria, and a whole a lot of other things uh, after taking overseas missions. And um, so we need someone to pray for us. So when your pastor prays, uh, when your pastor preaches, you pray for your pastor. Pastors are vulnerable, especially uh, that 24-hour period after they finish preaching. They are vulnerable. Many have been set up. Many uh, make 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 uh, uh, dumb mistakes, and uh, I know a lot of a lot of uh, people after church in in the uh, brick and mortar church they want to go out to dinner and this and that, and uh, you've got to be careful what restaurant you choose to to, to go to. Uh, you've got to ask the Lord to lead you, guide me. Where do you want me to eat, or what shall I do? I remember many times as a brick and mortar pastor. Uh, the Lord would say to me, don't go to any restaurant when you finish preaching. You go home and get some rest. And so, ladies and gentlemen, even with the online church, hey, Jackie Fisher, it is no big thing for me. When I finish preaching on the online church on Sundays, you know what I do? After I finish and, and we process the tape and send it out worldwide, I go upstairs put my pajamas on, Jackie Fisher, and I get in bed and I sleep for about three hours. It's called, you might call it a power nap, but Jackie says it's sleep. I go to bed and I shut out the world and I know that I need that rest. It, Jackie Fisher, it's taken me years to, to get to this point. Uh, before that, okay, let's Let's give you a scenario. Uh, you're ministering. You're teaching a class. Uh, Roy, you're teaching a class. Or Ryan, you're teaching a class. You've studied hard, prepared for it, prayed for it, and then you, you teach it. Teaching drains you. You're drained. And so if everybody says, okay, hey, Roy, let's go to uh, uh, um, um, Cracker Barrel. Well, Cracker Barrel may not be the place where God wants you to be. Because I know that after teaching and after preaching, uh, unless I'm prayed up, unless I have warriors praying for me, and unless I'm praying for myself, I can become irritable. I don't know if any of you have noticed this about you, but I know, know this about me. I can become irritable. And even, even when it comes to driving, if, you're, if you've preached hard and you've taught hard, then your driving abilities are not what they ought to be. So be careful. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, men, listen to your wives. Wives, listen to your husband if you're ministering. And if they say, no, I think you need to go home and go to bed. and think you need to go home and get some rest. Do it. I praise God. It's taken me years to get to this point. And another thing, the older you get, the wiser you get. And uh, your body tells you, okay, hey, no, no, you need to go to bed. So I go, I go to bed after the online church on Sunday, and people laugh at me. I don't care if you laugh or not. I'm going to get my rest. I'm going to get restored. And then if I have an evening service or an evening teaching or fellowship, then I get up. And then, then if I don't have any assignments, then Jackie and I will go out to dinner. But I don't want to take Jackie out to dinner if I'm irritable. And, and I'm drained because I preached hard and I didn't take time to get restored. I want that time with her to be quality time. I want to look in her pretty eyes and see her pretty smile and be able to smile back and enjoy the moment. Does this sound all right, Roy Rosser? Come on, tell me something if that sounds good. That sounds real good to me. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Okay, and so this, 
uh, 15th chapter is a this uh, 15th chapter is a very good chapter, and we learn a lot from it. Uh, she talks about having the importance of a prayer captain on page 204 and the responsibilities of the prayer captain. Um, now, we're, we're talking about a growing ministry where you have more and more people involved, more volunteers who want to pray. And so develop the captain. Team building, page 206. Um, give them assignments. Give them leaders. And once you assign leaders, trust them to pray for you. Now, I have a, a group of prayer, personal prayer warriors, and I share with them. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I will eventually be contacting them more and more. And uh, uh, but I have the confidence. I have the confidence that the ones the Lord has given me, and I've contacted them. They have agreed. I have the confidence that they are going to be praying. And so I trust God for them. I don't always tell them what to pray for, but I trust God that as they pray, they're praying and they're right on target. On page 208, do not expect everyone to understand what you have been through. Most will not. Ask the Lord what you are to share. Uh, in other words, you can't share everything with everybody. Be wise. Be wise and um, be wise in what you're sharing. Many intercessors do not realize that they need prayer warriors themselves. I think we've beat this point quite a bit tonight and uh, the last session. Intercessors need intercessors. Okay, so prayer walks. Prayer walks are a form of corporate intercession that take the intercessors directly to the battlefield. And the battlefield is usually a home or a church or a neighborhood or a community or even the nation. Prayer walks. Can you imagine a prayer walk from coast to coast, from Maine to California? A prayer walk uh, with uh, teams of prayer walkers uh, going from coast to coast, praying for America, going from state to state, in every state, binding a strong man that's been assigned to that state, every city binding the strong man assigned to that city, then uh, yielding the prayer walk to the next team that would take it from, uh, let's say, from New York to Philadelphia, and then uh, a team that takes uh, the prayer walk from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C., then from Washington, D.C., uh, uh, to Cincinnati, Ohio, or whichever way you're going. This could be effective. And we can pull down strongholds all over this nation. Cindy Jacobs gives examples about how they pulled down strongholds in Russia when they were in Russia and no one was paying them attention. <clears throat> attention. They would not even take their tracks or literature, but they prayed and got on focus and were very influential in changing lives. And she gives examples in other nations when uh, the prayer watches and the, the agreement agreement in prayer brought um, great results. Great results. I like this on page 211. Before you begin your prayer walk, it is important to dress yourself spiritually for the battle, just as you would dress appropriately for other occasions. Stop and pray before you head out the door and clothe yourself with the armor of God. Pray for protection for yourself, your home, and your family, according to Psalm 91. I often encourage people to pray Psalm 91 over themselves and their households. Claim that you have the mind of the Lord as you walk. You need spiritual exercise each day, just as your body needs physical exercise. And so these prayer walks, I have a friend uh, she's a pastor in Wilmington, Delaware, and she does prayer walks, and she does prayer walks with a policeman at night in Wilmington. She and her group will team up with a couple of the policemen, and they will walk the beat with the policemen, and they're praying as the policemen are walking their beats to ensure the safety of the city of Wilmington. This kind of prayer vigil 
pulls down strongholds. And Cindy Jacobs in this book talks about the cities that have been changed because people prayed. They walked the city and they prayed. They walked out of certain areas and they prayed. They would bind the strong man associated to that territory. You know, Satan is territorial. He has demons assigned to certain territories. Those demons do not want to give up those territories. He has demons assigned to households, to churches, to governments, to locations. But prayer warriors can bind the, the devil, bind those demonic spirits. The Bible says, whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And then we loose uh, the presence of the Lord. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Um, there have been times, and we get a witness from this textbook, <clears throat> that certain cities known for homosexuality, certain cities known for gambling, certain cities known as the uh, uh, murder capitals, they have changed because people have walked the streets of the city praying. When you put prayer into the atmosphere, the scripture says, uh, uh, our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Put prayer in the atmosphere. Prayer binds the strong man. Prayer uh, puts the nobles in chains and in fetters. And so this is a very, very um, enlightening chapter uh, teaching us how we can take back the city. We can take back the church. Uh, we can take back... Um, um, the country. Um, I hear people say, take back America. We can take back America by praying. Uh, America can become a godly nation by praying. And, and, and as we pray in agreement, pray without bitterness and malice in our hearts. Pray without uh, any, any, any deception in our heart. I mean, when true, true Christians pray with love in their hearts, Things have to change. Things have to change. By the way, I was so much impressed with the, the uh, funeral uh, services for George H.W. Bush. What a great man. What a great legacy. What, a, uh, what great tributes to him and to his trust in the Lord. Not only was he a lover of people, but he loved the Lord. And so... Um, our nation can learn a whole lot just by reviewing the, the uh, videos of the George H.W. Bush funeral procedures. And uh, because one of the main themes was love, love, friendship, love, friendship, caring. And um, we learned a lot. And so our prayers are out to the Bush family and for this nation. Okay. On page 12, if you know of specific areas of demonic activity, do not try to attack these alone. I'm going to read this again, top of page 212. If you know of specific areas of demonic activity, do not try to attack these alone, but ask others to go with you to pray. Make sure there is no known sin in your life when you go to pray. And so prayer, whether it's in your own prayer station at home, or if you're praying on a prayer walk or a prayer vigil, or you're meeting in the church with a group of intercessors, make sure there's no sin in your life. The scripture says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not even hear me. So all the prayer we do, all the noise we make uh, won't amount to a thing. If if, if we know we've got sin in our hearts. And uh, one of the things I'm concerned about, even when I get with intercessors, when I get with uh, other, among other preachers, among other Christians, there's, uh, you've got to take authority over that spirit of jealousy and envy because people, some people, people are jealous of you. And if there's jealousy, or if you've got jealousy in your heart or envy, or evil, or if you've got ought against a brother or sister, if you've got something in your heart against someone, God won't even hear your prayers. So we must 
approach God, prayer is approaching God. We must approach Him with a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <laughs> then, um, Cindy says, do not measure results by what you see or hear. Every prayer that you pray is effective and is like a seed planted in the ground. Continue to water it in prayer, and it will surely produce fruit. And be patient. Be patient. Some of these strongholds are not going to fall overnight. Uh, the Berlin Wall did not fall overnight. It took some time to build it. It took some time for it to fall down. The Soviet Union did not disintegrate overnight. It took time to build that union, and it took time for it to disintegrate. And strongholds, strongholds where the devil has a stronghold in a person's life, or in your family, or in your church, or in your community, or in your nation, these strongholds do not rise up overnight. And they don't fall overnight. But we have got to pray and pray and trust in the Lord. And as we pray, we're seeking God's heart for that situation. And God reveals his heart. And we pray and we mix our prayers with patience. Patience. <clears throat> the Bible says tribulation works patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. And we have hope as an anchor for our soul. And so as we pray, we're on the right track. Because prayer means we're asking God to change things. And we're asking God to change things according to his will. And the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. And the scripture tells us the importance of praying in agreement. Having a prayer partner. Praying more than one agreeing as touching upon Anything you ask of God, believing, and he will do it. Okay, so you may be involved in a prayer walk. Um, you want to change your city? You want to change your nation? Organize a prayer walk. I mean, and, and, and get some real serious prayer warriors. And it doesn't mean you've got to walk down the street yelling out prayers. It can be done silently. It can be done silently. Go from place to place. Claim that if, if, if there's a sex store on the street, bind that spirit uh, 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 that, that's uh, operating within the, 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 the people operating the store, bind that demon. And, and you can close that place down. <clears throat> if, there, if there is a, a house of ill repute in your neighborhood, go on a prayer walk. And, and don't condemn those who are involved in selling their bodies or those who are purchasing uh, uh, the goods or whatever. Um, but bind that spirit, that lust spirit. Bind that spirit of homosexuality. Bind that spirit of lesbianism. Bind that spirit of uh, um, manifesting itself in same-sex uh, partnerships and marriages. Prayer walks. You can pray and you can walk silently praying unto the Lord, and changes will come. Changes will come. They may not come overnight, but they will come. Persistence pays off. Persistence pays off. Joshua had to walk around Jericho seven days, seven days. And on the seventh day, the walls came tumbling down. Daniel prayed uh, after and fasted for 21 days. And the angel appeared on the 21st day and reminded D Daniel, I had to fight to get this blessing to you. And I was locked up in combat and I had to call the, the archangel Michael to come and help me. And now I'm giving you the answer God has sent to you. God heard you the first day you commanded the fast. It took me 21 days to get here. Now here's what the Lord says. And after I give this to you, I've got to go back and fight through the atmosphere. I've got to fight those same demonic powers to get back to heaven. So, ladies and gentlemen, this course is called War 
in the spirit. There's a war going on. There's a war in the atmosphere. There's a war going on to try to take your household under, take your marriage under, take your children under. There's a war going on to try to destroy the city, to destroy the nation and the whole world. But as believers who have been equipped by the Holy Spirit, who have the authority of Jesus Christ to pray, as we rise up and pray the prayer of faith, as we rise up and do what the Lord has commanded us to do, the Holy Spirit works with us. Remember, no one person can do it all by yourself. And no one team <clears throat> can do it all by yourself. Organize your team in shifts. Or if you're an intercessor, volunteer for a couple hours. Don't try to pray the whole 24 hours or the 48 hours. Take one hour or two hours. Then get some rest. Then come back. But trust in the Lord. Remember, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. Uh, if you're praying and, and you need prayer for your marriage and, and, and you, your prayers, you're, you're about exhausted, uh, find someone whom you can trust, who you can share your situation with, a believer, a believer, and ask that person to pray for you. Or get a group of believers uh, and, and let them, make sure you choose people whom you can trust who are not going to put your business out there in the street who will not compromise the information you've given them. Get some sincere, serious, blood-washed, God-sent intercessors, and you pray and ask them to pray. And while they're praying, make sure you don't sin. Don't let any bitterness enter into your spirit. Don't harbor any bitterness towards anybody. Confess your sins and trust the Lord and be faithful, be diligent. Be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, so I'm asking you to re review again chapter 16, possessing the gates of the enemy. When we possess the land over our cities, we gain control of their political, physical, and spiritual arenas. And this book teaches us how we can possess uh, the land. We can possess the gates. The, the gates is the place where the, the leaders of the demonic spirits meet to make their decisions. Uh, the gates in Israel's history, uh, the gates were where the leaders of the community made decisions. The elders made decisions at the gates. And so the, the demons, the ruler spirits, they, they have places of meeting where they make decisions and we can possess their gates. How? Through intercessory prayer. Okay, so that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I thank God for the time he's given us tonight. I thank God for your attention and your attention and for your patience. And I praise God for what we have learned. Uh, review of the textbook. Also, if you can, memorize Psalm 149, verses 6 through 9. Psalm 149, verses 6 through 9. If you can't memorize them, write them down on the 3 by 5 card. Complete self-test 10. You do not have to send me self-test 10. Okay? Uh, send me the six questions that are found on page 14 of your binder. Page 14, those six questions assignment questions for lesson 11. Okay, so tonight we've talked about prayer watches and prayer walks. We've talked briefly about possessing the gates of the enemy. Um, based on this course, uh, this lesson, the objectives, uh, you'll be able to quote Psalm 149, 6-9. You'll discuss the five keys to the battle strategy Jesus used. <coughs> Jesus used to defeat the enemy in the wilderness. Jesus had five strategies. Number one, he submitted himself to the Lord. Number two, he knew the word of God. And there are three more. You will know and submit to the two vital safeguards to be considered when participating in seasons 
of spiritual warfare over your city. There are two vital safeguards. And you'll know how to discern the strongholds over a geographical area. Learn how to discern. If you're in a city where there's a lot of murder going on, discern those spirits. Uh, Cindy Jacobs even says, do a history of your city. Find out how that city was organized. Who organized it? What, uh, 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 what, was there any Christian activity involved in the, start, in the form, formation of your city? And what event or events opened the door for satanic oppression in the city? And you can relate that even to your household, your marriage. Uh, your marriage has, gone, has been going smoothly for years, but all of a sudden it started going sour. Well, what happened? So do a historical investigation. In other words, discern. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what took place. And then ask God, Lord, how do we solve this situation? And God will, he will, he will solve the situation. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Praise God. So that's it for our presentation tonight. And we thank God. And I want to ask you, if you will, unmute your phones, and I'll be glad to uh, um, hear your questions or comments. And uh, then we'll fellowship, and then we'll depart for the evening. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, so I've noticed when I put all of this stuff into play and I've actually come before the Lord and I started doing an intercessory prayer, I didn't think that I was supposed to be an intercessor in the sense of um, what Cindy Jacobs was. But as the course went on, I realized that, you know, in everything you do that has to do with Christianity and trying to help anybody, you really have to be an intercessor in every aspect of it, don't you? That's right, Christina. That's right. That's right. You, uh, When people ask you to pray for them, the moment you agree, you're an intercessor. Um, in, in all that we do, we must pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. In other words, we cannot pray 24 hours straight, but pray without ceasing. Even when you're tired, you lay down, you have an attitude of prayer. You're still, your heart's still towards Jesus. And as we are concerned about others and their needs, we're praying for them. We're, our, our heart is to love them and trust the Lord to meet the needs. So, yes, uh, uh, we're all, in a sense, called to be intercessors. Just want to make sure I was understanding that right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else want to comment on Christina's uh, revelation? Pastor Carter. Yes. This is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Um, I've been learning how to share more with people when I'm out and to help them and intercede for their problems. And it's been going a lot easier now. Praise God, praise God. That caring, that listening ear, that that you know, most people, Jackie, want want you to give them some attention to. They just want to. Most people just want to know that somebody cares, Jackie. That's what I've been finding out, and I'm finding out it's it's a lot easier just to listen. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm learning how to listen more. Um, my wife, Jackie, will tell you, uh, he's not the best listener. <laughs> and she's right. She's right. She's right. Um, but I'm learning. I'm learning how to listen more and pay attention. Um, and that, that is, that is um, bringing great rewards. So I appreciate what you what you're doing and what you share with us, Jackie. Thank you. And and Jackie Fisher has a mother's heart. She's just got a mother's heart. 
I bet everybody in your community community looks at you as being uh, a mother image, huh? They do. They really do. I think they can sense that in me when, when they meet me. They can sense that in you? I think so. Okay, okay, okay. In fact, you you probably have a weakness for those who are suffering, don't you? I think I do. I, yes. I tend to be drawn towards them. Well, praise God. It's a gift from the Lord. And, and um, the scripture says, Cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. And there are times when people will give you their burdens because you've got a caring heart, Jackie. And so does Christina, so does Zizla, Roy does also, and so does uh, Orion. You, you all have caring hearts. And when you have caring hearts, you, you show that concern to people and people will, will share things with you. And so many of them are gonna roll their cares onto you. So take those cares and give them right to Jesus. That's intercession, Christina. You're taking somebody's care and you're offering it up to Jesus. You're not going to carry their burdens. Okay, the Bible says, cast thy burdens upon the Lord. But you're with them long enough to show that you care and, and, and you help lift their burdens. And then uh, the burdens they shift to you, you shift them to the Lord. That's done through intercession. Anyone else want to share? Okay. Anyone else? Then I've had a great time with you all tonight and um Praise God, looking forward to the final week, which is next week, in which we just uh, summarize the course and then um, get you ready to write your summary. And then uh, we talk about the next, the next classes that are available and um, where you want to go. I've sent each of you a, an email, and so um, if you want to discuss the direction of your classes, Give me a call. Or send me a text message or send me an email. We set up uh, some appointments. I'd like to talk with you on a one-on-one -on -one and uh, see which direction you want to go into, and I'll be glad to help you in that area. Once again, my wife Jackie sends her love to you tonight, and uh, we all love you, and we appreciate you very, very much. You all mean a lot to us. And um, Paul Begley appreciate you. He's, he's really appreciative of not just the school, but the students and the work you're doing and the things you're accomplishing. So have a good night, everybody. Father God, in the name of Jesus, continue to bless your children. Bless us all. Bless our students. Bless their families. Meet every need. Continue to help us to intercede and to cry unto you, not only for our own needs, but for the needs of others. And, Lord, rebuke the devourer, protect your children from the enemy, keep us healthy and strong, and we love you, bless you, and honor you, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, everybody. God bless you.